What is going on guys, it's your boy Minamai here and welcome back to my channel for yet another episode, episode 10 now of the Red Bull Revolution series with RB Amsterdam. Before we kick things off, if you haven't already seen episode 9, it was a great episode guys, do go back and check that out as we kicked off our brand new league campaign, uh, our third season with RB Amsterdam now and uh, we got off to a decent start so certainly worth a watch guys. Now in today's episode we're going to take a look at some transfer business that we've got done. We're also going to recap some of our uh, results since you were last with me on camera for episode 9. We are then going to play today's Livecom game and uh, hope that we can continue to build on what has been a good start to the season, guys. Before we do get into today's video, though, I'd really appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing to the channel and uh, turning notifications on so that you don't miss any future episodes of the series, guys. But without further ado, let's get into today's episode and uh, review our progress so far, guys. Let's go. So then guys, welcome back and uh, let's kick things off by reviewing our uh, off-camera form really. So you were last with me for the amazing 4-1 opening day victory uh, against FC Eindhoven. I've since played a further 10 games off-camera just to get the season rolling. Um, so a 1-1 draw against Young RZ, which I was quite happy with. Back-to-back uh, -back draws in fact, as uh, we picked up a 2-2 draw against FC Den Bosch as well. We uh, got our second win of the season away from home against Excelsior, a 1-0 win there. Always happy to have a clean sheet. Followed that up with another clean sheet at home to Cambour and uh, Theo Leone on the score sheet for us in that game, just after the half-time mark. We then went and beat Young PSV, which I was absolutely delighted with. It was a uh, an absolute goal fest, guys. Roller coaster ride, end-to-end -end stuff, but um, we did manage to edge that game, which was uh, very pleasing. Followed that one up with another clean sheet, this time against SC Telstar. Again, Theo Leone making the difference. There's a bit of a theme here, guys. He's uh, certainly been our most effective player this season. Unfortunately, we picked up our first loss of the season away from home against the Graf Sharp, who are a strong team. It has to be said, they have been in the Eredivisie um, over the last few years and um, have only spent sort of last season and this season in this division so a strong team with some good resources and and certainly a, a difficult test for us anyway since that that loss we have gone on a uh, string of 2-1 victories guys um obviously close run affairs but we are edging it which is obviously great to see so then let's have a quick overview of where uh, those results leave us so after 11 games uh, we have scored 21 goals and conceded 12 so um not the best but certainly better than last season. So what I'm really focusing on is the number of goals conceded per game. So obviously we've played 11 games, conceded 12 goals. I would like to be um, at a sort of ratio of, of a goal a game or less, really. Quite happy with the number of goals scored, although it could always be better. And um, I mean, to be honest, we can't really complain. We are top of the uh, second tier by a couple of points with a game in hand as well, guys. Um, we've already secured... Because of our form, sorry, in the first section of the season, we have already secured a playoff spot for the end of the season, which is quite cool. I quite like that feature about this division, guys. It's um, you know, split up into segments, and your performance in each segment is uh, taken into account when um, playoff positions are distributed throughout the division. So, um, yeah, we've already got something to play for at the end of the year, which is always, always nice. So we are going to take a quick look at our uh, transfer business since you were last with me. Now, I think the last deal we spoke about was the loan deal for Quincy Doe's, who has been fantastic for us, to be honest. Can't complain with his contribution at all. Uh, since then, we have actually brought in this young man here, Ezra Leveld, uh, on a free transfer. And he looks like he could be a really promising young player, guys. Uh, only 16 years of age. Uh, four and a half. Well, so about, about four star potential ability, we'll call that. Good determination. And, um, he's, you know, he's looking like he could be a decent sort of central midfield player, maybe an advanced playmaker, um, but certainly one to keep an eye on. It's quite nice to have a, a regen in the team that is actually looking promising for once. Other than that, guys, this deal here was a very important one for us. Um, it took an awful long time to get done. Uh, Kienu Lont was a free transfer at the end of last season. I was sort of courting him for a long time and uh, couldn't convince him to join, guys. I think probably because of our reputation. Uh, he wanted an awful lot of money. We managed to eventually settle on 1.8k per week, which makes him by far our most 
or highest paid player, sorry. But in terms of uh, the striker position, I think he does bring a lot to the table that I'm after. I think this year, some of the more important attributes for strikers are things such as anticipation, composure, off the ball. You know, so he is a relatively well-rounded striker for us. Still only 22 years of age and can still improve quite a bit. Can play anywhere across the front three as well. So he gives us that versatility. And obviously that 14 finishing is uh, is looking promising. Having said that, he hasn't quite made the impact I was looking for when I brought him in. But there's still time on his side. You know, only one goal and three assists in seven games for him. But um, I'm, I'm hoping that he will settle in nicely and, and start to, to fire us to hopefully what will be a promotion this year, guys. Finally, a nice sentimental transfer. Anyone that's been following since the beginning will remember this man here. Kenny Tage was um, brilliant for us at the start of our journey in the uh, the third tier, guys. Unfortunately, he did leave us for NEC um, as we couldn't offer him a full-time contract and couldn't offer him the money that he wanted at the time. He is now 30 years of age and was set for release by NEC. So this one's a bit of a sentimental transfer, guys. I thought I'd bring him back in for a bit of experience. He's got 13 leadership, good determination. Um, I think he's just a good lad to have around the squad, to be honest. As we were uh, lacking sort of more senior players uh, for things like mentoring and, you know, just to um, just to get the, the mentality right in the dressing room, I think. He also has 16 penalties, so he's um, certainly one to throw on if it looks like we're going into a penalty shootout. But yeah, uh, certainly a deal that I was... Uh, yeah, I was quite happy to do. Yes, we're paying him 600 quid a week, but I think um, he brings a lot to the squad, not just on the pitch, but, but also off it. And always nice to bring someone back to the club. Okay then, guys. Form has been strong heading into this game, which sees us take on top OSS in today's live com fixture. We find ourselves in first place. They find themselves... In fourth, I thought this would be a really good opportunity for a live com game, guys. I thought you'd want to see this one. So without further ado, let's get into taking a look at the team setup. So as you can see, yet another tactical twist, but I think we might be onto something with this one, guys. I call this tactic uh, the coiled spring. We've dropped the defensive line slightly. We no longer play with an offside trap, um, but we are still playing with a Gagan press. We just sort of set traps um, sort of in uh, lower areas of the pitch really we don't quite press as high up the pitch as we did previously and part of that really is because um, our centre backs aren't the quickest and often I found uh, opposition teams getting in behind us still even though we were trying to play that offside trap I think as the calibre of player improves at the club hopefully if we rise through the divisions to the era of EC and um, are able to attract a, a better calibre of player really we might be able to go back to playing with such a high line as it's a bit more demanding, I think, on the defenders. Anyway, as you can see here, a bit of a strange shape. It's kind of taken a bit of inspiration from uh, Ralph Hassenhutl's Southampton team, but also Jesse Marsh's um, Salzburg side. So, uh, yeah, you can see the kind of... It's pretty much a 4-2-2-2, um, just with the wing backs in sort of advanced positions. A double half back here, uh, just sitting in front. Defensively, we look to force the opposition inside, uh, where obviously we have numbers to be able to deal with the threat that they they pose. Uh, if we were sort of forcing them wide, we'd struggle a little bit, I think, because Birkhoff and Cavellier could find themselves in advanced positions and, and therefore aren't in a position to defend effectively. We're relying on the goals to come from Quincy Doze and uh, and Lont up top. Leone and Salah Ulad are going to be our primary sort of creating creative players, rather. And uh, yeah, it's worked out pretty well so far off camera, guys. So I'm hoping, I've probably jinxed it now, but I'm hoping we can carry that form into today's game. So let's go. Okay, so yeah, I think this is probably appropriate, guys. We've been on a good run lately, so go out there and impress me. As always, faith in the boys. My team talks are pretty much the same most of the time, I can't lie, uh, unless there's sort of special circumstances. With that being said, guys, let's uh, kick things off in today's live com game and get right into action. I'm hoping for a very entertaining spectacle for you guys. As uh, Lont knocks it back to Stankovic, Fabian finds Salah Ulad who attempts to spray out to Cavellier. It does get there in the end. And Cavellier finds Leone in the pocket. Diara now bringing the ball out. Stankovic, Salah Ulad. Nice football from the boys, just zipping the ball around a little bit. All the way back to Fabian now. Okay, I don't, know, don't quite know why that was a highlight, but it was a nice piece of possession, I guess. Set-piece opportunity for top OSS now. And... Okay, thank God it's disallowed. I was about to say the balls ended up in the back of the net off their first highlight, but um, 
Thankfully, they were in an offside position from the set piece. Yeah, miles off. He's in line with the keeper there. Bit of a let off though. We probably are going to have to defend set pieces a little bit better than that if we're going to come away with a result today. Book off now with the throw. Doze brings it down. Salah Oulad, edge of the box, finds Cavellier, wide right. Cavellier with the shot on target, but um, Bertrams is equal to it this time around. Was probably looking for Cavellier to cut that one back across goal, to be honest, rather than taking the shot. We don't really like our fullbacks taking too many shots. Okay, we uh, turn the ball over and then we give it back to them. That's uh, disappointing from Ashabar there. But Bukov with some good defending. Quincy does in behind straight away. This is the coiled spring in action. But unfortunately for us, the keeper is equal to that chance there. And here is Leone to whip in the resulting corner. Held by uh, the top OSS keeper there. He decides to go long but turns the ball over to us straight away. Cavellier bringing it down. Diara, Cavellier now. Ball in behind for Lont. Can he pull it square? Gets his head up. Leone's in there for the goal. Get in there, boys. Liquid football from RB Amsterdam there. Fantastic stuff. Cavellier in the wide position. Finds Lont, who's making the exact run we want him to. And for once, someone actually cuts the ball back. Leone's there and uh, a lovely little tap in and a really worked, really well worked goal, I should say, guys. Great start from the boys. All three attempts we've had have been on target so far. Gotta love that. Okay, whipped in by Top OSS. Bodies on the line back there, it's what we want to see. And Verbeek with the effort wide of the mark there. Castellan in the channel for the opposition. Decent defending. Can we get out to stop the cross? No, we can't. But it's an it's a easy save there for Booker. Who's been very good for us this season so far. Leone, the kind of only outstanding performer. I suppose Lont's on a seven match rating as well, to be fair to him, with that assist. Okay, so I think I'll take that. It's not been the most entertaining game in the world, but we have made the most of the chances that we have created. I'm going to go ahead with that one. I think, yeah, we, we definitely are capable of more. We weren't bad boys, but we can definitely improve in this second half. No doubt about that. Things are looking promising at the moment. Lammers with the ball at the back for top OSS now. Goes long. Great header by Diara into the feet of Leone. Okay, free kick. Oh, it's gone short to Wollenberg. Verbeek now in the wide area. Whipped in and dealt with well by our defence. Ruskin now for the opposition. They've spread the ball. This is some good play from them. They've spread the ball. Found the man in the wide area. And thankfully... Booker holds on to that one. A bit of a tame effort from the opposition there, but we shouldn't really be letting them have attempts at the back post like that. Coming up to the 60-minute mark now. Everyone's looking in pretty decent shape. We have picked up a fair few bookings, though, as Verbeek looks to shoot from this free kick, but it's blocked well by the wall, doing their jobs brilliantly there. In terms of candidates to come off the pitch, I think Cavellier is looking... Not only is he looking a little bit tired and he's on a poor match rate and he's also booked. So I think, yeah, that's, uh, that's certainly made my mind up on that front. I think, yeah, Bozeman's a natural replacement. Burkhoff booked as well. Um, but unfortunately, we are missing Kenny Tage at the moment through injury. So no direct replacement at left back for us. Quincy Doze has been poor. So Boris Bell is going to come on up top. Nice to have that kind of depth up front now. Obviously, Boris Bell was out for about a month or so with um, an injury, but we do have him back now. As we go into the last sort of 15 minutes or so, guys, this would be a cracking result. I would take this. Obviously, not the best watch a 1-0 win, but I'm sure you guys will appreciate the clean sheet, just as I will. Here's Diara. Salah Ulad. Diara, great ball out for Bozeman, who already is booked. He's only been on a few minutes. Lont pulls it back. Boris Bell, and it's blocked. Oh, man, that could have been it. That could have been game, set, and match there. Last five or so minutes now. Can we see this one out? Boesman with a throw in. Leone back to Boesman who wins the corner for us by ricocheting the ball off the opposition. Chance to get the ball into the box now for Leone who is taking his time with it. And uh, after a couple of rebounds it goes out for a goal kick for the opposition. Three minutes added time. Burkhoff now to whip in the ball from this free kick. Headed clear. By top OSS and we gather the ball at the back with Stankovic. Burkov now. Stankovic again. Goes a bit longer this time. Turns the ball over. Good defending back there though. And Boris Bell finds himself in behind. 
And Boris Bell for 2 0, guys. Fantastic stuff from the boys. See how quickly we went from back to front there. And that is why we call this tactic the coiled spring, guys. Look at this. Just we absorb pressure, knock it back for Ashabar after we turn the ball over. Long ball, Boris Bell's in behind. Exactly the type of goal we're after. Nice to see a tactic actually perform in as well as you, uh, you had hoped and doing the things that you had uh, sort of envisaged when you put the tactic together, really. So good football from the boys. Fabian goes long. He turns it over, but it shouldn't matter too much. Referee should be calling time now. Any second now. We want this clean sheet. Come on. Look up. Fabian, we're just keeping the boys. Great football back there. We're playing very, very well, controlling the game. Lont turns the ball over again. And still, the ref has not blown, and he does now. It's all over, guys. Fantastic victory for the boys. Great performance to go with it, and the clean sheet. Can't ask for more. We are very, very happy with that result. Let me know in the comments what you think of this new tactic, guys. I think it's, um, it's certainly got a future in the series, and I think I might try and develop it outside of that as well and um, you know, see if, if it's an effective one sort of across the board. So there we have it then, guys. Today's fantastic performance in the live com game leaves us five points clear of young PSV, but more importantly, six points clear of FC20, who are obviously relegated from the era of EC last season. Um, they're going to be a very, very strong force in this division, I think. Although they've already lost three games, which is a bit of a shock, to be fair. Um, but yes, obviously, they are the sort of next available promotion candidates because naturally, young PSV can't be promoted to the era of EC. So uh, I can see a a, a battle really developing between ourselves, FC20, I think top OSS and NEC as well, all looking to fight for promotion this season. Obviously, a lot of games still to be played, but um, we are looking in a very strong position indeed. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. I certainly enjoyed recording it for you. I'm just thoroughly enjoying this series, to be honest, and um, I'm glad that you guys are sort of alongside me for the journey, really. If you have enjoyed the video, please do let me know by smashing that like button for me. I really would appreciate it, guys. It helps get the video out to a, an even wider audience. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing and turning notifications on if you wish to follow the journey with RB Amsterdam, hopefully right to the very top of European football, guys. Finally, though, thank you very much for tuning in to today's video. I appreciate the support as always. Most importantly, take care of yourselves, guys. Check in on your friends and family. Very important that you do that. Um, but until next time, thanks very much. Cheers, take care.